Hi, this machine uses this RTC slash NVRAM IC for timekeeping and to store calibration data. The battery ran out, so every time it was shut down it had to be reconfigured. These chips sometimes are hard to find, can be quite expensive, and you can't buy used ones or you risk buying one with a bad battery already. So I'll try to replace the non-replaceable battery. The datasheet doesn't have an internal diagram, so I don't know where the battery is. But on these packages it's usually on the top side. I'm trying to balance it on the edge of the knives to see if I can feel a heavier side where the battery might be. I think the text side feels heavier than the drawing side, so I'll bet on it first. Not wearing gloves is fine, but definitely don't forget to wear a mask. I'll start by removing very thin layers of encapsulation until I can see the metal. Many devices use RTC and VRAM ICs. As the name suggests, they are used to keep the time and sometimes an additional data when the device is powered off. They were very common in older computers and some other devices like this one. Nowadays, flash memory chips are very cheap, so modern devices usually use them for non-volatile storage. And the modern variants of these chips are usually RTC only. There are some machines that use them and still use them as planned obsolescence, but that's a subject for another video. I'm starting to see metal, that means I got lucky and found the battery. Now it's just a matter of slowly taking more plastic away until the battery can be removed. Alternatively, I could have just cut one of the battery terminals and leave it there, but I'm curious to see if the battery has any markings. I feel I can now remove it by forcing with a knife, so I'm placing the chip on a hard packaging sponge so I don't bend any of the pins. Unfortunately, my phone stopped recording the moment it came out, but I lifted the battery and cut the other terminal with those blue cutting pliers. I'm making sure the metal is clean and visible so I can solder a wire to it later. The battery is made by Panasonic and is marked BR1225. These VR batteries are similar to the more common CR variants, but have a different chemistry. Essentially, they have less current handling capability, but are more suitable for long-term storage and can also operate at higher temperatures. I will use the more common CR2032, because I have many in stock and I can easily find a holder for it. I could just buy a tab primary lithium cell, but I will use a holder so whoever needs to change it in the future has an easier time. I took a CR2032 holder from an old motherboard and I will use a drop of super glue to temporarily hold it in place. The other chemical is just an accelerator, so the super glue holds immediately. Now it's just a matter of soldering two wires to the positive and negative leftover metal pads to the battery holder. It was the first time I did this, so I decided to put a battery in and use a programmer to store some random data and check if it keeps it. After a couple of hours, I placed the chip in the programmer again and the data was still there, so I decided to make the fix permanent by encasing the exposed wires with epoxy. A few minutes later, the epoxy was cured and I wrote the original part number in the bottom in case someone needs to know in the future. This is how it looks with the replaced battery. It's not pretty, but it works.